Hello, my little smart and cartons, and welcome to Luna and West Sweet. Oh, die, when you're going to do a new episode and a new season. This is a one off episode, the number six episode season on India. Uh, today we will be quite a more detail what the topic is. Please, can you tell me you what you detailed them what the topic is? Anyway, if we haven't, it's on the Russian Revolution. No, enjoy the way. We will go through beautiful things in the desert. Wait, did I say desert? I say the desert? I don't know. Get over it with that. Um, 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 um. Hello, smart and cotton. Day, as I said, we were studying the Russian Revolution. And over here was my new television screen. Turn it on, fellas! Come on. No. Today, I was really set on studying the Russian Revolution. Let's begin. We took on who the Russian Revolution this is presented to the minds of people and who people are supposed to view at. Over in your western world with your big fat burger eating gun shooting American and big partial British people Why did I say that? I'm from Cornwall myself. Um but I but and but who do you view it and who over in your super aggressive Russian vodka drinking people view it? Let's get rid of the stereotypes, please. How do I undo this? No, the spiral of disaster. <laughs> no, we are going to be too cunt. We hear the Russians view the Russian Revolution. The Russians view the revolution. As we the stage it, as this appropriate Soviet propaganda presented it, as more of a great um, event, uprisings, and the Marxist theory of inevitability, if we can even pronounce it, that's nice to say, inevitability, gets guessing for film, and the great battle taking place of socialism eventually overcoming capitalism. And now, who the West views at? How do those big fat gun wielding burger eat in American food? And us posh tea drinking mouth, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, uh, mouth holding British people say it. Western propaganda. So he chose it, chose the Russian Revolution, as I act as a as corrupt demon taking over a country that's old monarchies to to a new corrupting system of murder and a lot of bad things. Really, neither of those views are correct, and really, it's somewhere in between. Somewhere in between it, maybe. And then the next time, next, no, no, next time, the next scene, we will be exploring exactly what happens. Now, let's go back a little bit of time. No, back a little bit more. No, not that far back. Yes, that's right. Now, let's talk about what happened and. Rahu in the 1800s, which set the scenes for the Russian Revolution.
Johann Alexander the Second was a great reformer. He reformed many things. He abolished serfdom. He aided some elected candidates, which would advise him and would have some power over the local areas governing. Quite a good one. Um, although he did do some bad things, including banning the Ukrainian language, but um, which will be quite relevant today. But we're not going to talk about that. What's going on right now? This is the history lesson, not a present lesson. Although his reforms were very controversial, on one hand, his reforms were loved by some people, but much of the peasants didn't like the reforms because they believed they didn't go far enough. Then, a lot of the nobility believed that he reformed too much. So, it was very difficult for him to get the balance and to keep everyone happy. Of which led to his demise. In eighteen eighty one, on the streets of Saint Petersburg, Alexander the Second was reading Doom, going to the Winter Palace, preparing to sing Russia's first constitution, meaning that the Russia would be a much better nation. But he didn't know. That, dur that during that day, he would he would face his seventh assassination attempt. A member of the people's will shot at him from the crowd. He survived this assassination attempt, but unknowingly, another member of the same terrorist organisation, the People's Will, threw an explosive at him, killing himself and Alexander. An explosion. Alexander died a couple of days later from injuries. If Alexander the Second was the reformer, Alexander the Third was the deformer. Now that's uh, it was the, was the, uh, that's not the right word to use, factor, but he, his son, Alexander the Third, who told me there was a name shortage? Someone, there always seems to be a name shortage, um, but his son came to the throne after him. Her son, um, had been tutored by a very much orthodox and very much um, pro-aristocracy tutor who believed that everyone who was not Russian or at least spoke Russian and, and was culturally Russian was superior to any non-Russians and that all worshippers of the Orthodox Church were superior to non-worshippers of the Orthodox Church. Alexander III um, had this tutor also tutor his son, Ale Nick, not Alexander, and not, not another Alexander, not another one, thankfully not. He was called a certain Nicholas II. But back to him later. Alexander III did, did lead to unreform things. He undid many of his further great reforms, although thankfully didn't undo the, his emancipation of the serfs. Which, although he, uh, although he did try to make a compromise, meaning that they would have to pay that to them, which was almost unimaginable, which would take thirty-two years for them to pay, but it was a skirt at least, and um, and he um also brought a very unpopular policy called russification which was trying to make the non-russians and the russian empire more russian so does that mean throwing them throwing vodka at them i don't know russification was sadly did not involve throwing vodka at people it was actually 
a much more depressing subject. They um, would force people to convert to the Orthodox Church, or at least forcefully replace other churches, and they would um, force the Russian language onto people, banning other languages, which his further sometimes did as well with the Ukrainian. Yet Ukraine! Sorry, apologies if I said no wrong, because that would be probably be Russian. Sorry, you're out there correcting me. But and not but one group that his further was very harsh on were not the Ukrainians but the Jews. He was very strict with them, and he um banned them from working on Christian holidays, meaning as they couldn't work on Jewish holidays, they would they would have be disadvantaged to Christian ones, and he encouraged riots that killed many Jews. Many Jews fled, and guess where they went to? Germany. What a good old do you? And you could tell I was being very sarcastic then, but then the German point was the best place to go. But this is not we're going off topic. One day, when Alexander was chugging along on his little train, Alexander the third, of course, chug, 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 toot, 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 the train was derailed. So, and um so the man that the um the um uh, roof thing the, the train um carriage roof came and fell onto his family who were having foods in, in the cafeteria foodstuffs of course yummy um and because he was a very tall man seven foot i believe um, who he, um, lifted up the train, the, the, the train roof, uh, of the carriage, and let his family work out, um, and although they thought he was, um, home from this, he wasn't, and he died of a gut inflammation, um, many years later, 13 years into his reign. Nicholas the Second became the king because he was the son of Alexander the Third, and he, thankfully, to my very great relief, is not called Alexander. Thank goodness the name shortage is over. But that is not the point. For we are going to talk about who Alexander the Third die at exactly the wrong time. Bless him. His nobles, advisors and governors all said after he died, he died at exactly the wrong time because if he had died a couple of years earlier or a couple of um, a bit earlier they, they would have had more poor over Russia. If he had died a bit later they his son would have all been trained up to rule Russia properly, but none of them had happened. So, the untrained Nicholas II became King of Russia. Zer, zer, zer. But, now what will come next? I'm sure everything will be fine. He married a German princess, which, as you can guess, became very, very problematic later, but his wife um was from Germany and um well that went well wouldn't it but but no let's get to the next section this is a very short section introducing Alexander the Second because his reign is probably the most eventful one in terms of our story because it's when it actually happens <laughs> Zuri Nicholas II, 
to say good, it will be a good idea for him to make himself popular by staying a woo, because everyone knows woos make people very patriotic and very, very happy when they win. But, so, not but, no buts yet. So, he decided to go to war with Japan because Port Arthur has recently released port from the Ming Dynasty. Oh no, sorry, the Qing Dynasty. Um, was what well, used to be Japanese and the Japanese wanted it back. So he decided to go to war with the Japanese and the Japanese decided to go to war with Russia by sending a declaration of war. The Russians claimed it broke the rules of war because it arrived at Pe Petrograd, the Russian capital, um, before, um, after, sorry, um, before, um, after, no, I'm getting very confused, it arrived at Petrograd after the Japanese first launched the first offensive. The Russian navy earned itself, but was quickly defeated decisively by the Japanese, and, and then, Another battle began. The Russians sent their fleet all the way round, through all the way down, through Europe, all the way round the entire world, or all the way round the entire Eurasian and African continent, just to get up at a Vladivostok to stop the Japanese. But on their way up, the Japanese destroyed the Russian fleet, and, and the war ended in Russian defeat. The war may have been an embarrassing defeat, embarrassing it really was, but the embarrassment was just a filled hatred amongst the Russian people for the Tsar, and um, that created the first signs of the problem in the Tsar system, it was what started the first Russian Revolution, the 1905 Russian Revolution. The 1905 rebellion was the first rebellion against the Russian Tsar. I'm not, I'm the next informed on this one, but we, we will give it a go. I believe it started. I would recommend checking up about this and um, watching um, some videos about this. It is a very interesting thing, and sweeter is not the most informed on it. But um, when some priests currently decided to present a um, position to the zoo and we were shot down and some other people were shot down and some protests happened um, and there was a very big protest which was shot down and then and then afterwards famously said I well, do not believe that, the, that we will see a post-revolution that this generation will see a post-revolution in Russia um, but he was very wrong the was that was very very proud indeed for the zoo. But now on to our next section because the section is new we're gonna get really short because uh, I'm gonna up for the big event Zoo, my new friend, Rasputin. You see, Rasputin was a self-proclaimed prophet and mad monk, but that didn't stop Nicholas II from being friends with him. You see, the economy was looking up, everything was looking good for Nicholas II. Everyone was happy in the last few years, there hadn't been a major um, revolution or embarrassment. At especially in an embarrassing word, but then he made a new friend, Rasputin. Rasputin was, as I said, a mad monk, but you see, he had a son, his oldest son, Alexei, I think he was called, had a bleeding problem. He bleeded much too much, and the medicine they were giving him was making it worse. Rasputin, they decided I was asked to help heal them and invited to um, uh, 
dinner but with Anastasia, who, by the way, did not survive the revolution, if you were wondering. She was shot with her family, but that is for a much later date for us to cover. But she, she invited him to dinner and he, um, he healed Alexei and um, he was much better from his bleeding problems because he told them to stop taking the pills. And because he stopped taking the pills, he stopped bleeding. And um, the um, who he are uh, was then free. So the Zoo became very close friends with him, and he became very close to the Zoo, especially to the Queen, the German princess I was talking about earlier. Then Rasputin was, the, was decided that Rasputin was too powerful by some of the fellow nobility. So they decided to invite him to a party. This party, what he was invited to, was secretly an assassination attempt. Rasputin was fed lots and lots of poisoned cakes. He was free, despite the fact they had been very poisoned with so much poison. Yeah, he didn't, there was no piece of weave. Um, he, um, was then, um, they shot him. Yeah, for some reason, and just in case he wasn't dead, they put wrapped him up in a blanket and threw him in the river. And apparently, while they were throwing him in the river, he was still wailing in pain. But no one knows whether this is true. There was, it was proved by looking at his body that he was poisoned. But but whether he was shot was quite is quite unlikely. But no one knows. But he froze to death. So he froze to death or poisoned. No, it was either froze to death or shot. Yeah, and, and both narratives say so I'm getting very confused, but, um, no, anyway, Rasputin was dead, and the Queen was very, very angry because Rasputin was one of her very, very close friends. So, this meant that the, the two um, people responsible for this were hanged the next day with no trial. And then Nicholas did another very stupid thing. He decided to begin a war. He joined World War One by invading Serbia and started World War One himself. Sorry, no, I'm getting very confused about my history. But anyway, if you want a new movie World War One, I'd recommend researching it. But he invaded Austro-Hungary for invading Serbia, which sparked World War One, and thus, um. War was devastating. People had to like queue very, very and very very long clothes to get food and just for bread. Um and this was not very nice for people. So they wanted change and fast. After the military campaigns were not going well, he decided to take personal control of the military, which was a very bad idea because he knew if anything went wrong, he would be personally blamed for it, which would be, would be demanding a new form of government. But he probably thought that if he took personal control of the military, if he won, he would be personally thanked for it by the Russian people. But anyway, this was a very bad idea because he left in front of the country and his wife, a German princess, which was a very bad idea because the, the Germans were held by their feet and, and then and I hope he also left in front of the country Rasputin, who was still alive at this point but he decided it would be a bit weird to mess out his um, assassination out of his own um, part of the video so this was a very, very um, bad idea Dear, and this wasn't a good look for him. But as you can see, as I said, everything is most definitely going to be alright for the Russians. Now, the February Revolution began. You see, the revolution began. Many workers went on strike against the zoo and began to protest. And Nicholas demanded that the military would shoot them down, which would definitely decrease his popularity, especially during this war. 
who was doing by every single decorum, and there was no rational workers back, and the military refused to open fear on the protesters and join the protest, which meant an end of the Russian zoo, and fear of violence, Nicholas and abdicated and, 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 left, and left in charge the provisional government who would have to um who would have to struggle with Peru with the Soviets which were being set up, which were um things we put in place um in place of the um other ones which were parliaments that had that had no power because he could shut them down whenever he wanted, just like Charles the First in the British Parliament. And and anyway, this provisional government was was established in February, which was uh, uh, but actually in March, which is a bit odd. But no, the February Revolution happened, which changed Russia forever. Nicholas continued her his leaf, and um, everything was normal. The Mensheviks and the Bolsheviks fought a lot. And we're um two parties that had both split up more than they used to be the Major Communist Party. And um the Mensheviks believed they had to stay with the provisional government for a little bit to go through Marx's capitalist suppression time because they hadn't fully transitioned through that phase to get into the communist utopia. But the Bolsheviks were impatient and decided that they wanted to skip that phase. Um, but then they later on made the mistake of back in World War I and got themselves terribly destroyed and pieces. And Trotsky decided to join the Bolsheviks because, because of this. And, and then he became the leader of the Red Army with Lenin and began the October Revolution. The story between the February Revolution and the October Revolution is very, very interesting. And what happened, I am going to cover now. For the Soviet that had been set up by the Tsar and was made up of many socialist parties, including the Communist Party, as two splits, because it had split up into two movements, the Bolsheviks the one that Lenin was in, and the Mensheviks, who were slightly um, less extreme versions of the Bolsheviks. Um, and the provisional government, which was set up to rule Russia um, through, after the revolution. You may be surprised to know that while the February Revolution happened, Lenin was in exile in Switzerland, and because he was in Switzerland, it was very difficult for him to go over to Russia to join the revolution, because he would have to have gone through Germany. Although the provision, the provisional government was had many communist parties in it, especially in the Soviet. There was the Mensheviks and the Bolsheviks. The Mensheviks which was caused by a split in the Communist Party. The Mensheviks meant minority, despite the fact that the majority of the Russian population were Mensheviks. Bolsheviks meant minority, despite the fact the, sorry, Bolsheviks meant majority, despite the fact that Bolsh that the Bolsheviks were actually in the minority, which was quite odd. But anyway, the Mensheviks made the mistake of backing the provisional government uh, in the World War One, which was very, very un still a very unpopular war, which would be very soon something will happen. Because Lenin would cause mayhem and overthrow the Russian government and stop their involvement in World War One, he was a very valuable asset to the Germans, so the Germans decided to let him go and cross through their territory and even offered him money which he declined so as not to cruise upward in the German economy. He, he went back to Russia, of which, and started the October Revolution, which actually happened in February. And the October Revolution was a violent rebellion, which started a bit earlier by taking over cities in the formation of the Red Guard, which, which his job was to um, protects the Red Cities.
after taking control of the urban areas, Zanin set out to take over everything. He, he launched a coup which took over the whole of Russia and this was a, and, and made a treaty with the Germany, the Treaty of Brack, which meant that the Germans got lots and lots of their land, including Ukraine, Belarus, Estonia, which were all given um, independence after the Germans, uh, after the war was over. But, but that, that doesn't matter because the Danin decided to and after taking over the whole of Russia, he stopped the war. And this caused much, much dismay because it lost quite a lot of the Russian population. And and, and the Whites, who, who were, who were prizer or other socialists, they began to rebel, backed by the Japanese and the British. This was the beginning of the Russian Civil War. In 1917, Russia was under communism. Communism! Just at the end of 1917, there was a communist Russia. Except, the problem was with the Treaty of Litovsk with the Germans had given up much of Russia's land, including parts of Ukraine, Belarus, and the Baltics, which had been part of the Russian Empire. Um, the Soviet view of the was different from the Soviet view. The Soviet Union view, or the Leninism, view different nations as as different nations and an eternal brotherhood of communism. Zurism view them all as different and not Russian. It must all become Russian, as we now mentioned earlier, with racification and throwing vodka at people. Nations, including Britain, America, Japan, and France, were very angry at Russia for leaving World War I. And because many of the people who opposed the regime for its oppressiveness and many things like that, decided to raise up. They were called the Whites, who fought against the Communists, the Reds. The only problem with the Wheat Force was because it was not very unified. It was made up of people who wanted the Zor back, Zorists, people who wanted the provisional government back, um, provisionalists, I don't know, other communists and socialists who really wanted a different type of socialism. Anarchists who didn't like the Soviet state and they were backed with the um, other um, nations that were angry, as I said, with Russia and even the World War I. Lenin had a plan to win the war. The plan was called World Communism. World Communism involved killing lots and lots of farm people and forcing them to hand over their grain to please the Red Army, which uh, worked in securing a victory but also worked in killing millions and securing lots and lots of rebellion for them having to deal with later on. The Red Army controlled the industrial cities and the Whites and the White Army controlled the rural areas, meaning the Red Army had the advantage of having all the industrial production to feed the White Army, meaning the Red Army had eventual victory, ending the Russian Civil War in 1921. War was won with a new economic pol policy put in place. And guess what it was called? The NAP, the New Economic Policy. What a creative name! This was to replace war communism as it was so unpopular as it killed peasants and forced people to work to their deaths. And then the new economic policy that had some um, factory, private factory ownership. Made, but the rest was under the control of the state. 
although states kept control over the, over the most profitable industries like steel. We are going to stop our episode noon. We will be having a few references, a few want to do more, and we will be giving you a link to the quiz. But the thing is, we are going to leave it here. If you want another series on the Soviet Union, then feel free to ask for one. I will be happy to make one, much more than happy. And, we, and if you want a video covering any of the other topics in more detail, feel free to ask. Sweeter will be very happy to do some work, extra work, and episode ideas will be very much thanked. Welcome to um, the references section. If you've come this far, I'm sure you will be an expert on the Russian Revolution. If you want to test how much of an expert you were, scroll down on your YouTube browser and see your um, quiz. Click on the quiz link or copy and paste it in your browser. The link is in the description, so it's right below the thing where the comment section would be if we hadn't already turned it off. The quiz is a 10 question quiz to test your knowledge on the subject we have covered. Hopefully you will get them all right. I hope you enjoyed your episode of Learning with Sneaker. All suggestions will be appreciated. Thank you and goodbye.